but if the water what is going on guys we are back on the super not the og not the uh well not my og i wish i had an og super 73 but we're back on the rx and this thing is still kicking this thing is still riding i still ride it it might not be on camera but I still do regardless of what all the comments say about this bike and I think that's what I want this video to be about I mean I've been really busy with work and just with life in general to the point where it's been a lot harder for me to make content honestly it's because of the weather right it's summertime so it's either really really hot like it's just that hot and it's that uncomfortable or it's storming rain and I can't ride my e-bikes out in the rain so because of those two uh, factors, I haven't really been posting that much. I've been posting what I can, when I can, but still, I feel like it's like very uh, far apart from each other, like every post. So here we are, bringing back a bike on the channel that has one, never really left, but two, always brings up a lot of hate for some reason. So I actually want to address no comment no comment specifically, but a lot of comments that I've been getting recently on my videos about the e-bikes that I have, you know, in, in my arsenal, in my garage. A lot of the comments are just pretty much more or less the same thing. X bike is overpriced for what you're paying at Y price. Uh, Z should definitely be a, uh, something that you should buy with that kind of money, this, that, and the other. Pretty much just all talking negatively I'm gonna cut through all speaking negatively on the bikes that I have you know in my garage which if you guys are new to the channel from the first bike to the, that I got to my current bikes I have the Super 73 S1 Rose Ave the Super 73 RX which is what I have right here the Frigo F2 Pro which I'm honestly thinking about selling. So if you guys want a bike for cheap, let me know. And you're in the DMV area. The P51 Bullet, which has been getting a lot of hate in my comments at least. And the Rave Bullet GT. So recently I put out a, uh, a YouTube short, which I'll put up on screen right now. So here's something I never thought I'd be struggling with. Uh, which e-bike do I ride today? First, I have the Super 73 Rose Ave S1. I see this as my weekender bike. You know, it's a limited edition. I don't want to ride it all the time. I try to keep it as nice as I possibly can, just because these are so rare and hard to come by now. Next is the Rave Bullet GT. Uh, pretty much a upgrade to the S1. It has rear suspension, a longer seat, and higher top speed. I also think it looks really cool. Feels like a motorcycle when you're riding it. Right now, this is probably my favorite bike, the P51 Bullet. I would ride it now, but the thing is, I'm about to hit 100 miles, and I want to try and get that on video. And, of course, there's the Super 73 RX, but the thing is, I think I have a pinch flat. I have to change the tube, but only thing is, it's so hot, I don't want to do that right now. So, in the comments down below, of these four e-bikes, which one would you ride? Now, as you can see, I, I was just talking about the different e-bikes that I have. You know which one is you know why i'm not riding it or why i can't decide to ride it whatever i was saying in that video right and a lot of people were hating on both the p51 and the super 73 rx people like the rave because it's still kind of new and people love the super 73 s1 just because that's a classic bike right like you can't really hate on those two bikes but the rx people were saying i guess they made the assumption that i bought it somewhat recently or maybe people are people are just new to the channel and they don't know that i've had this bike since it initially came out in like 2000, uh, 2021, I think. So I guess people think that I paid almost $4,000 for this bike. I did not. I will tell you right now, I got this bike for a steal from Super 73. I don't think I can say how much money I paid, but definitely was not four grand. And even then, the bikes weren't four grand. Nowadays, they are. I'm just going to chalk it up to inflation. I've been working with Super 73 for the longest, like ever since I got my first e-bike. So I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, why they price the bikes the way they price them. So if you were to get this bike at the earlier pricing, like maybe a year or two ago, then yeah, this would have been worth it. I, I still think it is worth it, right? I still think this is an overall fun bike. Tons of customization options that you can do, not only on the site with the different variants that they have, 
but also with the aftermarket components from tires to baskets to headlights to storage to lighting like turn signals like the possibilities are basically endless when it comes to making a super 73 e-bike your own and i feel like just for the customization alone again whether it's on off the website or aftermarket there really is no price to that right and as for the p51 that is still a new e-bike company i think they've only been like in business for a little over a year or so so while you can't say they're still getting into the swing of things if you will a lot of people are all are always saying in my comments whatever even mentioned the p51 right at the price point of almost four thousand dollars which is basically a suron or i guess nowadays more expensive a class 2 e-bike being more expensive than a talaria like what why would you even bother spending four thousand dollars on a class 2 e-bike when you can spend that same money for basically a, a low powered motorcycle or a high powered electric dirt bike you know what i mean and this this is just my reasoning i could be wrong you know I, the way i see it is not everyone wants to go you know suron or talaria uh, type of speeds right off the gate right like i've got i had my first e-bike i got it back in like 20 what was it I, I got it on my 23rd birthday so about five years now i've been riding e-bikes for about five years and even when i try one of my friends is like onyxes or surons or whatever i still am kind of scared like i don't feel comfortable going that fast and if me with like five years under my belt which i'm sure people have had more years but just speaking from personal experience people with five years under the belt of riding e-bikes class two e-bikes and they don't feel comfortable riding a class three or high powered e-bike again that just should go without saying people should be able to spend the money that they worked hard on to buy whatever they want and the people who get mad about that i just don't understand like i could buy let's just use an example i could buy a suron right now for the channel and I'm sure I'll get comments hating on it saying, Sauron's are outdated, you should have bought this, you could have done that, this, down the other. And really, I'm in my head, I'm like reading those comments and I'm just like, bro, I, I wanted to buy a Sauron because of these like X, Y, and Z reasons. Like if I wanted to get a Talaria, I would have gotten a Talaria. So really, I don't understand why people hate on what people buy. I, I, I don't get it so, like, so much. Like people all are really hating on the P51 just because it's a class two e-bike roughly four thousand dollars same price point as a suron but less power you got to weigh the pro and the cons nowadays people with high powered e-bikes are getting you know caught pulled over maybe even their bikes confiscated right all because they're quote unquote illegal which i still don't exactly know what that means to have an illegal e-bike but just going off of what everyone's saying that's an, an illegal bike right just again going off what they're saying and people really i feel like buy the suron not just for the power but for the suspension and where you can ride it just for the fun of it and the p51 has that same suspension just at a lower power which then makes it a legal e-bike so that way you don't get pulled over by the cops you can't get it confiscated you can ride it on a bike path on a bike trail on a sidewalk whatever and no one's gonna bat an eye but if you were to ride if you were to ride a Suron the same way, then yeah, you'd probably get in trouble and then you get your bike confiscated and then you can't ride it or you get a ticket or whatever. Like unless you're really riding, you know, in the dirt on the on the fields, whatever, like doing jumps and shit, I personally don't see a reason to buy a Suron, right? Or a Talaria. Like I ride my bikes mainly in the street or on group rides. You guys see that. Except for that one month like earlier this year where I kept going to a bike park to learn how to do jumps. I never go on the dirt, right? I like to stick to the streets. Move this cat food over here. Move this to the corner. I don't know how old this is, so... Yeah, that looks pretty old. Basically, what I'm trying to say is let people spend their money on what they want to buy. If you get mad at it, then you have better things to worry about, I guess, because, like, why are you going to get so upset about someone let's just use me for example why would you get so mad at me for buying you know a p51 bullet which is the same price as a suron or a super 73 which can only go x miles an hour when i could have bought this bike that goes faster for the same price and better batteries or whatever right i, I don't i just don't understand that and if your reasoning is something like customer service 
I kind of understand that. Like if you have a bad experience through customer service with like one of these companies and it kind of gives you a bad taste in your mouth, I get it, right? Like I get bad customer service experiences from other e-bike companies that want to work with me all the time. And it leaves a bad taste in my mouth and I don't want to work with them anymore, right? I'm not saying, you know, any of the bikes that I have now, I don't want to work with anymore. I'm just saying like, I can, I understand the feeling. But for example, uh, Super 73 usually gets a lot of hate for their customer service because of like parts or batteries or motors going bad or whatever. And just people can't get the help that they need when they need it. And it maybe it's because I'm an influencer, you could say. I've always had good customer service experiences with them. However, I'm not getting the same love that I used to. So it kind of gives me a better understanding as to what people are getting i guess more of a taste of if that, if that makes sense like if i'm getting not the same amount of love that i used to from them being an influencer i can only imagine what actual customers are getting just from being regular people if that makes sense but honestly i feel like i'm rambling on i'm not trying to rub some dirt on anyone's name this is going to be the dumbest transition ever but speaking of dirt if your e-bike is dirty Use Charge PEV, the only PEV electric vehicle cleaner designed specifically for e-bikes, electric scooters, e-mopeds, and much more on the market. The best cleaners, setup, waterless wash you can use on your e-bikes to reduce damage, but to make your bike look better, Charge PEV. And use my discount code in the description down below to not only save yourself some money, but to get you some entries in future giveaways for other PEVs as well. They just gave away three Talaria X's and I hear there's something big coming soon. And in case you're wondering how do I keep these bikes looking so clean, Charge PEV is the way to go. They have a few different products right now. Uh, they always run in giveaways for PEVs like Sarans or Talarias or Minimotos. And if you want a discount on this product as well to try it out, but also keep all of your entries into the giveaway just by buying this product, use code Yachty Chavez, save some money, keep your PEVs looking nice and clean all summer long. Okay, that was dumb. I just wanted to sound like one of those cool commercial guys. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, in terms of a customer service standpoint, I get it, right? I can understand it. But me, I... I guess I'm in too deep. Like I, I, I would never want to sell my S1, my Rose Ab. That's like just too much. That's just too cool to sell. They don't make the Red RX anymore, so I can't really sell that. Like it's kind of like a, I don't want to say it's a rare bike, but it's not so common anymore. I feel like since they have the new colors out. But the community is just too good for Super 73. I'll give them that, right? And, and again, I'm not trying to spread hate. I'm not trying to put dirt on any any companies, any any bike's name or anything like that. I in this video, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate and just kind of speak to both sides of the uh, the argument, if you will. Like I can I, I can already tell. I've literally just been rambling on in this video, going 20 miles an hour and enjoying it because I don't need to really pay attention as much as I would if I was going 40, 45, or 50 on an e-bike. <laughs> However, I do see a high-powered e-bike in my near future. If you guys have been watching the channel a lot recently, I'm sure you can guess what bike I'm talking about, but that will probably not happen until the beginning of the new year. Because if I were to get that bike now, uh, I would get it now, ride it for a couple of months, at least until it gets cold. So we'll say about three months on, on, the, on the worst note, right? I'll ride it for three months, it gets too cold, and then it's stuck in my garage for like another three months while winter's here. And then by that point, a newer version of the bike will be out. And so I'd rather wait for the newer version to come out. I can't really talk about it because one, I don't want to, you know, burst anyone's bubble. But two, I also said I wouldn't talk about it to the, to the guys. So um, just know that a new version of an e-bike that I've been having on the channel recently uh, will be coming out in the in the next couple of months. Stay tuned for that, of course. Not the fa not the fastest e-bike out there, not the highest power, at least to my knowledge, e-bike out there. But I will say, when I rode it, I loved it, and I just want it. I want one in my garage now. So that's something I'm definitely going to be working towards. Which, by the way, speaking of working towards a goal, you guys have been killing it on the channel with the 
just overall interactions i passed 10,000 subscribers which i don't know if i ever said thank you on video for so thank you for that i've been doing content on youtube for over 10 15 years now been going in and out of like different content like gaming and fitness and lifestyle and vlogs i've been in and out of different uh, genres if you will but the fact that i've been able to find my niche with e-bikes and grow with that to the point where i finally hit 10,000 subscribers i don't get a plaque or anything like that but it just feels good to have that number next to my name on youtube so with all that being said what do you guys think about class 2 e-bikes set at different at specific price points or that have specific components that are more expensive or e-bikes of the same value uh have already if that makes sense i don't know if that made sense i feel like when i ramble on a lot i, I tend to not make sense towards the end of it but either way i rambled on a lot in this video i hope you guys enjoyed it another riding and talking if you will Drop a like on the video, leave a comment on your thoughts down below on pretty much anything that I was talking about. If you guys stuck through to the end, uh, just so I know, for the fun of it, go ahead and comment Rainbow Sprinkles. That sounds dumb, but I think we're going to do that now. For those of you who stick to the end of the video, we're going to start commenting a code word. So that way people in the comments who don't know the code word are confused. They're going to want to know what's going on with the code word, and they're going to watch the whole video. Okay, so Rainbow Sprinkles. Comment that, just so I know you watched all the way through, you care what I have to say, you like my content, all that jazz. And, uh, oh, I'll be at Electrify Expo in D.C. this upcoming weekend. I think it's the 22nd. Don't quote me on that. Um, it's the Saturday event. There's a Saturday and Sunday. I'm going on the Saturday event. I'll be there. So if you guys are also going to be there, don't be scared. I meant to say shy and scared at the same time. Don't be shy or scared. If you see me, come up and say what's up. Say hi. I'll take pictures, whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to hopefully try out some e-bikes. I'm bringing my helmet set up right here to try in case I get to try out some new stuff that I haven't tried before. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Ugh. How's my flat? Yeah, I got to change that soon.